Financial success is not a hard science. It's a soft skill, where how you behave is more important than what you know. I call this soft skill the psychology of money. Morgan Housel. Debt is a major issue for so many people that can cause stress and sleepless nights. The average American is burdened with over 16000 in debt. And while most of us understand the weight of carrying such a debt and the struggles that come with it, this number has slowly but steadily increased over the last 20 years anyway. In The Psychology of Money, author Morgan Housel gives us a series of lessons told through short stories that illustrate how you can think and feel about money and why they are more important than IQ when it comes to financial intelligence. The first lesson, no one's crazy. Take a look at your best friends. All of you likely handle and think about money a little differently. This isn't because your friend Susie is crazy. It's because everyone has their own unique experiences, past, and viewpoints on how the world works. This unique perspective each of us has often shapes how we behave with money. They aren't crazy. They are simply acting in line with how they view the world and how money affects that. Next, luck versus skill and risk. When it comes to your wealth, your skills in your chosen profession, be it as a doctor, lawyer, or even a janitor, have little to do with your ability to save, invest, and grow wealth. Investing is affected just as much, if not more so, by luck than by skill. And because of this fact, there will always be risk involved in investing. Good decisions can lead to poor financial outcomes, while poor decisions can lead to great wealth. Effort, research, and intelligence can get you a long way, but you still have to account for the role that luck and risk play. On to never enough. Each of us has a point of enough when it comes to money. A point where more will not make us happy. In fact, pushing past this point will actually lead to regret. Finding your stopping point is one of the most crucial and hardest financial skills there is to develop. But it's one of the most important. What's the point in continuing to grind and work and slave when you feel the same afterwards? Morgan blames social comparison in large part for this problem. Do not compare your financial situation, wealth, or stopping point to another's. This is a battle that can't be won, so why even fight it? And since no one is crazy, set a stopping point that makes sense for you, and don't worry about others. Now, let's talk about getting wealthy versus staying wealthy. Getting money and keeping it are two distinct skills. Getting money requires risk-taking, hard work, and being optimistic, even through the hard times. Keeping money, on the other hand, means mitigating risks, avoiding greed, and remembering that you can lose it all. Tales you win. Many people make the assumption that great investors are right most of the time, which is why they are so successful. The truth is that being right even 50% of the time would make you a great investor. One of the most successful funds in the world, Jim Simmons Medallion, only profits on about 50% of their trades. You don't have to be right all the time. You just have to give yourself ample opportunities and not sell every time the first sign of a problem hits. Now let's talk about freedom. The ability to do what you want, when you want, with who you want, for as long as you want, is priceless. It is the highest dividend that money pays. The ability to roll out of bed and do whatever you want for the day has more effect on our happiness than our salary, the size of our house, the cars we drive, or any fame that we gather from external sources. Money's greatest intrinsic value, and this can't be overstated, is its ability to give you control over your time and how you choose to spend it. The man in the car paradox. Many people are driven to be wealthy for love, respect, and admiration that it will bring them. The problem is that wealth doesn't bring you any of those things. When you see a Ferrari driving down the street, you admire the car, not the driver. The expensive items that money can buy you don't bring the admiration, respect, or love that you desire, especially from those who you want it from the most. Now, wealth is what you don't see. Spending money to show people how much money you have is the fastest way to have less money. The truth of the matter is that wealth is the things that you don't see 
and you don't buy. It's the nice cars not purchased, the jewels not bought. You see, wealth does not come from material purchases. Wealth comes from investments, money saved in the bank. Wealth is the ability to buy expensive things, but not doing it. Wealth is hidden. Next, save money. Savings rate is one of the biggest factors to wealth generation. Not income, not investment returns, savings rate. This means making more money, right? Wrong. It means living below your means. It means not buying that Ferrari that everyone else wants to admire. It means not redecorating every month or so, or spending money every night eating at a five-star restaurant. Saving money allows you to increase your investment rates, to stash money away for life surprises, and keep you grounded instead of living large and blowing your earnings on things that you don't need. On to our favorite lesson. You will change. Think back to when you were 10. You probably wanted to be a pro baseball player, a singer, or an actress or an actor. Things changed. You grew up. Long-term planning is hard because we do grow up, and with age, we change and want different things. When you apply this to financial planning, it means you should avoid extremes. If you assume that you'll be happy on a very low income during retirement, you might just not have enough money for the cabin in the woods or the home on the beach that you have come to desire. On the flip side, working 80 to 100 hours a week in pursuit of every dollar might lead you to regret all the things that you missed during your years of working for a comfortable retirement. By planning for something in the middle, a balance between working hard and earning enough to invest in your future and enjoying your life while it's happening, you are likely to save, earn, and invest in a way that will bring you the most long-term happiness. And finally, nothing's free. Everything has a cost, but not all prices will appear on labels. You probably know and are willing to pay the cost of your car loan, food, and vacations. But have you ever put a price on investment returns? The price of saving or investing might not be apparent right away, but rest assured, it is there. Remember, financial success is not a hard science. It's a soft skill, where how you behave is more important than what you know. I call this soft skill the psychology of money. There are plenty of books out there that talk about the how and why of finances. Very few address the underlying beliefs, thoughts, and attitudes that we have towards it, though. These things make the how and the why difficult, making the psychology of money a must-read for anyone trying to save more, fix their finances, or improve their relationship with money. If you're still here, we're assuming that you liked our summary, so please hit that like button to support the channel, and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we release new animations.